Um, I, I said that the Ron and Chanel were there on Friday night, but I failed to mention that my niece, Kina, was there on Friday night as well. Um, and Kina walked in and asked the right question. I didn't ask the right question. She asked the people in charge the right question. She said, yes, they're honoring the Cranford family tonight, so where are the Cranfords sitting? <laughs> and I didn't know they had reserved seats for us. On the, where were you at? On the second row. I didn't know, I didn't ask the right question. But Kena did. So Kena sitting up there like she all important. <laughs> I want to. I want to appreciate. Appreciate. Uh, appreciate Kina. On the day. Uh, I can't call her my favorite niece because I have other nieces. <laughs> but she's my self-proclaimed favorite niece. <laughs> okay, let's read it again. And when the day of Pentecost, read it. Uh-huh. They were all with one accord. With one accord. One uh huh. And suddenly. Uh-huh. Yes. And there appeared them upon each of them. Read. Feel with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And the word of the Lord is blessed. There is one specific God given, Holy Ghost inspired, anointed reason why I'm preaching from this text. And that is that today, all around the Christian world, we are celebrating the day of Pentecost. Amen. Today, everybody said today. today. All around the Christian world, today is the day of Pentecost. Why you say that, preacher? Because, my brothers and sisters, Pentecost is, and, and I need you to follow me, is a Jewish festival. As a matter of fact, it wasn't even called Pentecost until about 300 years before Christ came. This feast began way back in Moses' day. It celebrates the end of the wheat harvest. Celebrated some seven weeks after Passover. Passover is the celebration commemorating the exodus of the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt. And if you understand your Jewish and Christian calendars, you know that the Passover day is the Saturday that Jesus was in the ground. And the very next day after the Passover, Jesus was raised from the dead. What they would do, ladies and gentlemen, the Jewish people, they would skip one day after the Passover. 
and then begin to count one to 49. Seven days equal in one week. And for seven weeks or 49 days, they would count down to the day of what they call Shavuot, but later became known as Pentecost. The reason why they selected the word Pentecost is because it literally means the 50th day. 50th day after what? The 50th day after the Passover. And so from the Passover to Pentecost was 50 days. And on the 50th day, which they would call the 49th day, but they would skip the Sunday after Passover. On the 49th day, which is our 50th day, they would have what they called a convocation where they would offer sacrifices to the Lord, worship the God of the Bible, and call together all of the people into one place to celebrate Jehovah. They would come from all areas of the world and descend upon Jerusalem. It doesn't matter what language they spoke. It doesn't matter what region of the world they were from. It didn't matter their economic or financial background. They were going to Jerusalem so that they could worship the Lord. And on this particular day, when the day of Pentecost or the Shavuot was fully come, we had Jews from all walks of life speaking all kinds of languages that came to Jerusalem and God picked this day. Help me say this day. To come through in a way that he's never did in human history. For Jesus had instructed his disciples in the 24th chapter. Y'all gonna help me preach? In the 24th chapter of Luke. Matter of fact, you might wanna turn there so that we can read it together. The 24th chapter of Luke in verse number 49. 24th chapter of Luke in verse 49. Nine. And the Bible says in the 49th verse, well, let's start at verse number 46 so we can get some context. He says in the 46th verse, 24th chapter, and said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Verse number 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Verse number 48, Jesus said unto them, and ye are witnesses of these things. Verse number 49, and behold, I sin the promise of the Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. If you kind of put scriptures together, you would understand that Jesus wasn't just talking to the twelve. But he was talking to as many of his followers that did not have fear in their hearts of the Pharisees. The Bible gives us to understand that there were about 500 people there that went from this mountain called Bethany down to Jerusalem. And the Bible says 
that in the first chapter, there were about 120 people that were assembled together in this room. Now, you got to understand that Jesus stayed upon the earth after his resurrection 40 days. And on the 40th day after he rose from the dead, that's when he gave this speech and ascended into heaven. And so approximately 10 days between his ascension and the day of Pentecost, 500 people started out in the upper room. But on the day of Pentecost, there was only 120. Because there were some folk there who said, I'm tired of waiting. Uh, there were some folk there who said, I got to go to work. Uh, there were some folk there who said, I got something else to do. But if you really want the promise, if you really want the Holy Ghost, somebody says, stay there. You might not get it on the first day, you might get it the second. You might not get it the second day, it might be the third. Or the third day didn't work out for me, it might be the fourth. But however long it takes, I'm going to stay right there. I wish you would tell three people, stay right there, stay right there, stay right there, stay, 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 stay right there until God fulfills his promise. Stay right there until God fill you with the Holy Ghost. Stay right there. Don't let your buddy turn tell you the wrong thing. Or your buddy going to tell you, come on, let's go. Your buddy going to tell you, we got something else to do. Your buddy going to tell you, there's a party down the street. But you tell him, you can go if you want to. But I'm waiting on the promise. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay right here. I can't get no help in this house. I'm going to stay right here. Is there anybody in here that is interested in getting what God has for you? Can I see the hand of you that want God more than anything else? Is there anybody in here that want what God has for you so bad that you will stay past your bedtime? You You'll stay past your hunger time. You, you'll stay past your breakfast time. You, you'll stay past, y'all ain't gonna help me in here. You'll stay as long as it takes. I wish you touch three people again. Tell them as long as it takes, as long as it takes. I don't know how long it's gonna take me, but as long as it takes. Where's Rita at? Where's Rita at? Where's Rita at? 500 people started out in the upper room, Rita. But only 120 people stayed. Yeah, there were about 380 people that got frustrated. 380 people that got tired. 380 people said, what, what's the use? 380 people said, I got better things to do. But see, if they had a stay there. Ah, because, let, let, let me bless you real quick. See, your day of Pentecost has got to fully come. Uh, I wish you would help somebody and say, this thing got to fully come. Oh, uh, some of y'all got the partial stuff. You got, you got the partial thing, but you, I wish I had, I wish I had somebody give me some power on this mic. You, you, you got to wait till this thing fully come. Some of y'all got the, 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 you got a touch. That's what you got. You got a, you got a little bitty touch. You got a little bitty, you came to the altar and felt good. You, you came to the altar. God help me now. You came to the altar and felt it. You you felt a little bit. You y'all ain't gonna help me in here. You 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 felt a little something going down your back. Oh my God! I don't I didn't want you to raise me. I just want you to give me some. Just cut me on. Don't don't cut it back down. Where is Chuck at? High five your neighbor and said neighbor. Yeah. Pastor gonna preach to you today. Yeah. <laughs> He gonna preach to you today. Turn it down some more. Turn it down some more. Oh, bless his name. 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 Oh, name. And let me share something with you. Let me share something with you. Let me share something with you. See, see this thing, this thing wasn't done in no corner. Yeah, some of you, it's just getting a touch, then you're going back to your seat. 
and you're not getting the fully. You're not getting the. You're not getting the fullness. You, you, you're not getting the completeness. You, you're getting the touch. That's what's happening to you. And ain't no change taking place. Because you, let me tell you something. You, it takes time for God to deal with some of us. It takes a while for God to work some of that mess out of you. You got some stuff in you that needs to come out. And it ain't going to come out all together right now in, in an instant. This ain't no microwave salvation. This thing takes time. And, and, and if I can just get people to understand, if I can get young people to understand that you don't come up here, lift your hand up and say, thank you, Jesus, one time, and then go back to your seat and think you're going to have it all. But you got to... You got to let us pray with you. you. You got to let us lay hands on you. You got to let us speak into your life. You, you got to let us prophesy into you so that you can get the fullness. Because the day of Pentecost has got to fully come. Touch three people and say fully, 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 fully. It's got to fully come. It's got to, it's got to fully come. If, if you get the fullness, you will stop cussing. If you get the fullness, ain't nobody gonna have to tell you to stop cussing. You'll stop cussing on your own. If you get the fullness, I won't have to tell you to stop clubbing. You'll come out the club on your own. See, that's the reason why. Can I share something with you? That's the reason why there are certain things, Mother Johnson, that, that, that 20 years ago, we didn't have to preach. It didn't have to come over the pulpit because the Holy Ghost dealt with you. The Holy Ghost talk to you. The Holy Ghost will let you know when you were stepping toward that thing. The Holy Ghost will say, uh-uh, that's the wrong way. The Holy Ghost will let you know, oh, that's the wrong place. The Holy Ghost will tell you, you in the wrong spot. The Holy Ghost will tell you you're talking too much. The Holy Ghost will tell you, calm down. The Holy The problem is, I'm preaching to a bunch of folk that don't know what the Holy Ghost is. And this ain't no cogent doctrine. This ain't, y'all ain't gonna help me in here. This ain't no apostolic doctrine. This is the doctrine of the Bible. We teach the Holy Ghost. And you need. The, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together in one place. Come on. Hunt somebody and say, get the Holy Ghost, get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> get, the, get the Holy Ghost. Hunt, hunt him on the other side. Tell him, get the Holy Ghost. This ain't no Baptist thing. This ain't no Episcopalian thing. This ain't no Presbyterian thing. This is a Jesus thing. Get the Holy Ghost. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. And, and, and the Bible says, and, and, they, and they were all together in one place. Mm, God, if, if I can just get some folk to help me on this. Because we got some folk that every time they come to church, they're busy. Every time it's time for church, you got something else to do. Every time it's church time, you, you doing everything except being in the sanctuary so you can get the Holy Ghost. And see, if you really get the Holy Ghost, you will stop telling people how you caught the Holy Ghost last night. Because anybody that's talking about how they caught the Holy Ghost, I went to prayer chapel the other day and I caught the Holy Ghost. Anybody that's catching the Holy Ghost, you don't really have it. Because the Holy Ghost is not a cold. The Holy Ghost is not a virus. The Holy Ghost is God himself. Are y'all listening to me? And, and, and see, and see, and see, and, and that's what we need. We need to be all together, like the scripture say, all together in one place. Not folk over there in, in, in the fellowship hall and, and another folk in the office and, and somebody else in the nursery and, and somebody else in the finance room and, and somebody else outside and, and somebody else across the street. And, and, but they were all together. 
Maybe that's the reason why we can't get Pentecost like we need. Because everybody is everywhere but at what they're supposed to be. And, and, and watch this, watch this. And if you are here, your mind ain't here. The next time somebody hunts you and asks you, what did, I, what did he say? Tell them, don't ask me no more. Listen like I'm listening. Where your mind at? Your mind on sports center. Your mind on the golf course. Your mind on the NFL. Your mind is everywhere but here. They were all together. Am I preaching? And they were all together in one place. And they were with one accord. Can I teach you how to be with one accord? See, what am I? I'm the pastor. Which means I'm the shepherd. Which means I'm the leader. It, it, am I preaching? And then... Paul said on one occasion, because Paul was a super pastor, he was an apostle, that's a super pastor. Paul said on one occasion, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. So if you got confidence in me that I'm following Christ, when we get together, you do what I do. I'm trying to teach you how to get with one accord. The problem is, Elder Glenn, is that when I say thank you, Jesus, I got folk in the audience just looking at me like. But if you're going to follow me, when I say thank you, Jesus, what do you say? If you're going to follow me, when I say hallelujah, what you going to say? See, that, that, that's what the problem is. The problem is, is that folk don't know how to follow we can't get with one accord until you learn how to follow me. Watch what I'm getting ready to say. God made me a praiser. He made me a worshiper. And so if you are really following me, the spirit that's on me should fall on you. Now I'm not saying that you got to act like me. Because there's only one Jesse Cranford III. So you don't have to act like me, but get my spirit. Especially you who say you got the Holy Ghost. If you got the Holy Ghost, get my spirit. I really shouldn't, I really shouldn't, even, I really shouldn't even put my glasses on. I started putting my glasses on and the Holy Ghost said, don't put them on. Because there's some folk you do not want to see right now. really wanted to look at the look that were on your faces, but the Holy Ghost said, you don't want to see that looks right now. But I wish you would hunt somebody and tell them you need to pass the spirit. That's what your problem is. You got your own spirit. You doing what you want to do, when you want to do it, but you need to pass the spirit so we can get with one to call. You need the spirit of the leader. Oh, bless his name. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. And, and, and I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready to close. Because I, I got the feed your communion. I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> M Mother Johnson, I'm so blind that even right now, I cannot see your face. I just know it's you. <laughs> Mother Johnson, this, this is the absolute truth. This is the absolute truth. There is a spirit of contrariness in the house that whatever they see me doing they do the opposite and I bind that devil we've been praying for the Holy Ghost to move we've been praying for God to have his way and you got a contrary spirit in you I bind that spirit I bind it in Jesus name that's a bad spirit And we bind it in Jesus' name. We take authority over that spirit because Jesus says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon scorpions and upon serpents and upon all the power of the enemy. Satan! 
I command you in the name of the Lord drop your weapons and flee for the Lord has given me authority hey he's given me a authority oh bless his name oh bless his name oh bless his name come on son bring me home oh bless his your leader your leader put up acts chapter 2 and and, and verse number 2 and the bible says and suddenly uh, yes is there anybody in here that would like a suddenly is there anybody in here that would appreciate just one suddenly I don't need a whole lot just give me just one suddenly and suddenly there came a sound from heaven like as of a rushing mighty winds and it filled the whole house that's why we need to be with one accord because when God comes in he comes in the whole house when God comes in I like it when he don't start in the pulpit but he starts with the ushers that's when I know God is in the house when I see the ushers when I see the hospitality with their hands lifted up when I see the deacons them old stodgy deacons them old stiff deacons when I see them with tears in the eyes when I see them with uplifted hands then I know God's in the house because when God comes in he comes in the whole house he doesn't just touch the preachers he doesn't just touch the first lady but he touches everybody is there anybody in here that just want a touch from the Lord I just want God to do something for me I came today because I needed I needed God to touch me again I needed God to fill me with the Holy Ghost yeah because it's not a Baptist thing come on and help me it's not a Baptist thing shake your neighbor's hand and tell them it's not a Baptist thing but it's a God thing it's not a denominational thing it's a God thing God wants you to have the Holy Ghost God he want to fill you God he want to baptize you God oh Hey. And the Bible said it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Yes. And verse number three, what does it say? And there appeared unto them cloven tongue, like as a fire, and it sat on each of them. Let me tell you something. When you come to church, don't ever think that God doesn't have something for you. Don't ever think that God doesn't have a tongue that's over your head. Don't ever think that God doesn't have a blessing over your head. We used to sing the song, God has got a blessing for you. He wants you to have it just Just reach, just reach up and grab it. I dare you to use your faith and reach up 
get the Holy Ghost. Reach up and get your tongues. Reach up and get your deliverance. This is the day of Pentecost. Reach up and get your breakthrough. Reach up. Oh, I'm not too sophisticated to reach up. I'm not too dignified to reach up. Yeah. 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 I wanted to, if not just for the Cranford, if not a Cranford thing, I wish you would help me. If not a Cranford thing, no, 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 but it's a God thing. God want me to have the Holy Ghost. Yes. And verse number four. The Bible said, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. If you've never spoken in tongues, don't worry about it. Come. He want to baptize you. Yes, he does. God, he want to fill you. Yes, he does. I got a question that Paul asked the saints in Ephesus. Paul ran up on some saints in the city of Ephesus. Yes, he did. And he asked him, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Why don't you shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, have you received the Holy Ghost since you got saved? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you joined the church? Have you? Receive the Holy Ghost since you went to new members class. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you walked into the sanctuary? If you haven't, this is the day of Pentecost. This is the day of Pentecost. God, He want to. God, He want to baptize you. God, he want to do it. Yes, he does. Say yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 Now listen to me. Let, let me tell you something. Some of y'all, some of y'all not used to this kind of church. Where folk just, they just go off while the preacher's preaching. Y'all not used to that. Some, some of y'all get uncomfortable. My God, my God. But there was one particular service where Peter was. And he was preaching the same message that I'm preaching today. And the Bible says, while he spake, the Holy Ghost fell. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you don't have to wait for the altar call. You can get it right now. You can get it right now. 
right now you can receive you don't have to wait for a special calling you can get it how get it now 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 You can receive it. Woo! Shana! Ebaba! 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 Oh, blessed man. Oh, blessed man. Oh, blessed man. Listen to me. I'm closing. I'm closing. Some people are hung up on the tongues. In their minds, they just don't see how that gonna work. Why is it necessary for me to speak in tongues? You don't have to, watch what I'm getting ready to say, because I want you to hear me. You don't have to speak in tongues in order to get the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes, he will speak in tongues through you. Now watch what I'm getting ready to say. I heard Bishop J.O. Patterson, the late Bishop J.O. Patterson say, There's a difference between being filled with the Holy Ghost and being baptized. Take a, like a big cough, coffee mug or a big coffee cup and fill it up with water. That cup or that jug is what? Is filled. But notice, he didn't say nothing. You just put water in it, didn't say nothing. Take that same jug and dip it in the water. Notice what it says. Not only is the jug filled, but it's actually baptized in it. And when the water was going in, it started saying, gup, 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 gup. That's what happened to you when God dips you in the spirit. When you go in, gup, 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 gup. Tell somebody, that's how it happens. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. This is the last thing I'll tell you, and then I'm going to feed you communion. Don't, no one in this house, reject what God has for you. Are you listening to me? 
You never want to say, yeah, I want this from God, but I don't want that. Anybody that loved God would say what? Whatever you have for me. I may not understand it. Y'all too quiet for me. I may not understand it. But whatever he has for me. I don't know how I'm going to act. You don't have to act like nobody in church. Well, Pastor, do I have to run around and do all that? You ain't got to run, jump, leap, touch these chandeliers. Just say, Lord, whatever you have for me. Lord, whatever you have for me. Whatever you have for me. Thank you, Lord. Come on, thank you, Lord. Come on, thank you, Lord. I want to pray for somebody. Now, logistics won't let me pray for...